Hi guys, so I'm the vegan bloke, My name's Sean. Um, we've had loads of family and friends ask us, right, well, we want to eat a bit health, more healthy, uh, especially in light of what's going on. Um, and obviously we're vegan, so we obviously re eat really healthy all the time. Um, but uh, yeah, so I thought I'll do some videos um, of kind of what food we eat, how we prepare it. Most people think that vegans eat that, so, so that is literally how we would eat something. <laughs> what do you think, Ruby? Yeah, that's uh, pretty accurate. That's pretty accurate, yeah. <laughs> and then we just take one of these, chomp it down. No. But this is what we will be cooking with. Um, please forgive my outfit today. Usually I wear um, suit and tie, but I thought, you know, we're in lockdown. I should dress, uh, tone down a bit, you know, make sure my hair looks accordingly. Um, also, if you hear my, me sit sniffling and um, uh, sneezing everywhere, it's not because I've got coronavirus, it's because the Cretinus Council have decided to cut all of the massive part next to us. So I get really bad hay fever, so my head's now exploding, so that's good. Right then, let's just get down to it. So, uh, we've got our ingredients ready. The best thing to do when you start cooking is just be prepared, because once you get everything out, you know what you're cooking with. Um, you've got all your ingredients here. Lovely spinach and kale, Ooh. I bet all your meat eaters are like, oh my God, oh, disgusting. Um, but it's not, it's gonna be awesome. Um, we've got salt and pepper ready, a bit of turmeric. I'll go through each of these um, and like how I cook with them. But have everything out and ready. Have a tea towel strapped to you, because you're gonna need that. Oh, I don't keep looking at that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, a few other bits and pieces that I'm gonna go through. So we're gonna be turning this into this. Yum yums. Right, okay, so things you need, decent knife, and it needs to be sharp, sharp knife. I love that sound. <laughs> right, especially after like four weeks of isolation. Um, and then, yeah, and then we've got our organic tofu. Most people think, what the hell do you use that for? Um, but I'm gonna turn this into something outrageously tasty. So just you wait. Um, got a tofu press as well. Uh, you can do it different ways. You can squeeze all the uh, moisture and water out of it and I'll show you different ways if you don't have a tofu press. But this is just from Amazon. Um, I think it was like 20 quid. Um, we use it all the time, so worthy investment. Then we've got, um, come round here, Ray. come round here. Don't be shy. Uh, soy milk, salt and pepper. Um, some basil from our basil plant, uh, and then oregano, thyme, garlic granules, mixed herbs, might not use it all, um, and lovely flora, 100% plant goodness, <gasps> running out. So yeah, so I'm going to prepare the ingredients first. So <clears throat> first things first, you got to wash your hands, you got to wash your hands, I tell you. You have to wash your hands. 20 seconds, isn't it? Wrists, fingers, thumbs. And there we go. And then, look, already come in handy. Look at that. Awesome. Right, so we're gonna be, um, yeah, cutting up the um, mushrooms first. So, first things first, just pop the stem out. That's really nice meaty texture, just leave it leave it like that. And then nice sharp knife, slice those. And we're gonna be sauteing the mushrooms, so you don't want them too thin, otherwise they turn out all slimy and small. Uh, Cause they do, they do go quite small. So that's it, just pick those out, put those to one side. And then, there we go. Awesome. Sorted. Um, then uh, we'll, we'll leave the tomato. Um, now pepper, we're gonna wilt the pepper. It's gonna be awesome, it's gonna taste really nice. So just take the top off, seal the seeds in there. Cut down the side like that, open that bad boy up. Just cut out that bit, there we go. And this bit. 
Now, don't get rid of these. Pop them either in the compost or you can um, grow more peppers from them. All those lovely seeds. Also, have a bowl for all of your, your cut-offs. Nice and prepared. And then I'm gonna cut these long ways, actually. So we just cut them that way. There we go. That's it. Awesome. They're in there like that. Okay, right, the next thing is to prepare the tofu. So come over here. Come over here, there we go. So do it over a sink because this type of tofu is filled with water as you can see. So you take it out and it looks like something like that, which isn't very appealing, but it will be. And then we pop that in the press, just like that. Pop the press on and this has kind of elastic Plastic things that you, you put down. Now, if you don't have a tofu press, I'll show you what else you can do. If you get yourself a pan like this, it's gonna go horribly wrong, and a bowl. So a few of our family have said, oh, we, you know, we wanna use tofu, but it, it looks so unappetizing when you buy it, and, and what do we do? So, you can have it, just like that. Uh, maybe on a plate. That's it. I need to get the uh, frying pan on it. And then all you need to do is pop pop your frying pan on it, something quite heavy like that. And then maybe a few baked beans, chickpeas, cannellini beans. Oh, I bet people are thinking, what do they eat? Uh, coconut oil. So that's just going to weigh it down. And look in there, look in there, look. You see all the water coming out of it already? Maybe. Who knows? Right, so that, that is one way you could do it. And it's, it's not a bad way of doing it. It achieves the same thing. But because we're posh and we're proper vegans, we're going to use the, uh, the press. Where's it gone? There it is. Look, but look all that water already. So, pop the press on. Yeah, I would recommend this. And tofu has so many benefits. Ree, what benefits does tofu have? <clears throat> um, <coughs> <laughs> I know I haven't spoken in ages. Um, it's uh, got loads of protein. Um, so yeah, if you're not eating meat, it's uh, a good source of protein. Um, it's just got like, it's just really filling, um, really nutrient. Um, nutrient? Yeah. It's really nutrient. Yes. So. <laughs> There you go, you can't go wrong. We know what we're talking about. <laughs> oh my God, you're turning the heat, the gas on. <laughs> Stay away from the cooker. Right, so um, yeah, so that's a, a tofu press. I'll just leave that to one side and that will drain all the water out um, because we're going to be making a scramble tofu out of it. So we're going to be um, picking it off and make it really nice and, and scrambly, but it's a bit too wet as it is at the moment. So I've got all my pans out, um, ovens on because we're going to be making some um, hash browns out of sweet potato. So again, sweet potato is one that a lot of people don't really know what to do with. Um, we, a lot of the time, make sweet potato chips. Um, today I'm going to try sweet potato, well, I don't know, probably wedges or something. I mean, this is kind of a brunch, lunch, breakfast thing. That's what brunch is. Um, so I'm just going to cut through that just like that um, and then just kind of make it into wedges Christ, like that like that and we've already got loads of food as well so that's that's all we need but if you're gonna have like chips with something then uh, yeah that's that's the way to do it so what we need now is a little bowl that'll do because the key to having good tasting food, shockingly, is seasoning. It's all it is, seasoning and just making use of a few herbs. Um, and you know what, there's no secret to which herbs to use, you know, just, just try them out. Um, so I'm just gonna throw those in there with a bit of 
bit of plant sunflower oil, all right? If I'm not mentioned already, I'm vegan. Um, obviously, my shit smells amazing because of that. And uh, yeah, you know, we, we eat really well. Most people think, yeah, we literally just eat raw, raw food like that, which isn't a bad thing. But I love cooking. I've been vegan for about a year. Um, and obviously Rhiannon went vegan first and I was like, yeah, meat eater through and through. Love steak, burgers, hot dogs, sausages, bacon. Um, but it's a healthier way of living and I was always open to that. Um, and yeah, right. So what I've done, I've put in a bit of um, paprika. Smell that. So uh, yeah, paprika is amazing on chips, potatoes, um, just gives it really earthy. Bit of a kick, but it's not spicy. Not spicy. Um, and then some salt. Don't be shy on the salt and the pepper. A uh, bit of thyme, needs a bit of thyme, so, and then some garlic granules, or garlic powder this is, so there we go, just a little bit of garlic. Again I'm not very good with measurements and recipes, it's kind of just, just don't go mad, you know, don't go mad, just, you know, you can always add stuff. Later, if you add too much now, you're going to ruin it, and it's going to taste bad. So, right. So I've already preheated this oven, and it's hotter than hell. So I'm just going to pop those in there, and they're going to be really nice. So they go in for about maybe half an hour, 35 minutes. But just check them, and you can tell with the smell as well. You can tell if it's starting to burn or something. Right, the next thing we're going to do is start sautéing the mushrooms. Uh, so again, for mushrooms I like to use some butter instead of sunflower oil. just kind of gives it a more of a creamy... Yeah, that's butter in the pan. <laughs> Camera works awesome, babe. So, uh, there we go. Move away, move away. And you know what? I like we go on Instagram, we go on YouTube, and you look up vegan recipes. And it's like, you know, these people are living in immaculate kitchens, they're all white and like marble, and they're just so chilled and they're using all these ingredients that you know you can't get like in a standard supermarket, you know, and it's just you know, they're not well, I feel like they're not real people. Um so, you know, my video is gonna be like, we're in our shit kitchen, and we've got a terrible oven. Um, I mean, it's, it's a nice kitchen, I'll say that. But, um, you know, but we're real people. You know, this is how we live. You know, we're not gonna be all fancy with our portions all in little bowls, and everything's perfect, and everything's measured out. You know, cooking should be fun, and it should be an experience, and you shouldn't be constrained to recipes, you know? It should be, yeah, something that you create on your own. So that's what my beer is really like. And also I'm a guy and veganism is a bit a bit girly, I find at the moment, you know. Um, but you can make some outrageous food um, that keep your muscles strong, keep your testosterone going, so you still feel like a bit of a man. So the butter's melted. Butter. I feel like I'm really loud. Am I being really loud? <laughs> Um, so the mushrooms go in there, mushrooms going in there, there you go, um, and I'm just going to kind of fry them off for a little bit. Yes, 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 yes. They know what mushrooms look like, and uh, she's still put, training. Put the camera on me again. Please. Yeah, this is the most <laughs> important part. Um, You'll notice I don't use a frying pan much, because actually frying pans are really messy and it gets everywhere. Little pan like that, little pan like that, um, will do the, do the job. Now, season, <coughs> always season. So, don't be shy with the pepper. 
with mushrooms because mushrooms freaking love pepper. Match made in heaven. Um, and then some salt, nice pinch of salt. Give it a good old go through there. Um, and then the other thing mushrooms love is garlic, but you've got to be quite sparing. So only a tiny little spoonful, um, like a third of a teaspoon. And yeah, just, just keep organized, you know? That's what will make cooking even more fun if you keep. The next thing is the tomato. So we like baked, I suppose it's baked tomato, I suppose. Um, but really nice with a kind of brunch breakfast feel. So big, nice, beefy tomato. Just cut it down, down the middle like that. Oh, look at that. Look at that. We've not grown these yet. Like we're growing tomatoes. Um, but they're taking ages. So unfortunately, it's very little that we're cooking with today that is actually from our own garden, because we've got a garden and all our lovely, wonderful vegetables. Anyway, right. So we're gonna put a little bit of oil on these, a tiny little bit, and they will brown really nice. We should invent like YouTube like <coughs> videos that, that they can smell the food. How would you do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. Like, like um, a scratch and sniff. Scratch and sniff, <laughs> yeah. Scratch the screen and sniff it. Right, so again, season the tomatoes. Don't be shy. Right, we'll turn, turn that down. So you can hear it's kind of going a bit crazy. But you can see them browning now. That's, that's pretty cool. Right, so that's fine. Now, the next bit is just to pop a little bit of water in it. Come on, don't be shy. A tiny drop of water, just so it covers the bottom. All right, all right, all right. All right, there we go. <laughs> and then, pop the lid on. That's gonna saute the mushrooms, um, make them really juicy, really nice. They're gonna absorb all of that water. And because you've browned them off already, they're starting to caramelize. So there's some really nice flavors in there already. Add the water, and that's just gonna make a really nice mix. <sighs> right, now what? Uh, so, a bit of time on the tomatoes. The tomatoes need a bit of time. There we go. Move away, move away, move away. Now, I'm gonna pop them in the oven. So. Just after I put in the potatoes, put those in. So they should be done around the same time because whole tomatoes like that do take a while in the oven. Right, so that's going. Now I'm gonna make a start on the scramble. This is award winning, award winning. So come over here, don't be shy. <laughs> Right, so we're going to take out the, the tofu. Just wait until you see this. Oh my god. So it's kind of like shrunk by half like that. And look at all this lovely water. Now, okay, yes, yes, move back, move away. Now we try and. You are lethal with that camera. <laughs> okay, you need training. Right, <clears throat> so the tofu water, we've got like our composting bin, all of our lovely plant food waste. Don't throw stuff down the drain. So when you're boiling vegetables or steaming vegetables, just keep that lovely water, it's full of amazing nutrients and you can use it like the next day for, you know, uh, boiling spaghetti or pasta. <clears throat> Obviously not egg spaghetti or egg pasta. Um, and yeah, and the flavors are just gonna, it's gonna be like stock, like if you use stock, it's kind of that really intense flavor, or yeah, just put it in the compost and use it on the garden. Or if you've got like a windowsill, you know, and you're growing tomatoes or something, just use it in the watering can for those plants. They'll freaking love it. Right, so we're gonna cut the tofu just in half, because that's more than enough for two people. And then we're gonna, Pop the other half away in the fridge. 
and this will keep for a good couple of weeks. Right, so now um, we're going to put some fire on and then we're going to um, just crumble this tofu into the pan. And I don't want to admit it, but I love scrambled eggs. I loved it. When it was my signature dish, wasn't it, babe? Mm, well, it was. Well, well. <laughs> like, you know, I remember the first time I made you my scrambled eggs and it blew your, yeah, blew your it mind. Yeah, was nice. But anyway, scrambled tofu is much nicer. Yes, and it's uh, guilt-free because there's no dead chicken fetuses in it. Isn't it? So, we're going to turn this bland looking tofu into outrageous scramble. So, mushrooms are just um, bubbling away there, I might just turn these down a little bit. And then the butter's just melting. And then we're going to scramble, we're going to just uh, pick away at this into there. And it's so easy, it's got really nice texture. Now it's squeezed out some of the some of the um, moisture. It's really nice and just easy to handle. That's it, just like that. There we go. There we go. Just like that. Yeah. So yeah, another motivation for making videos like this. Yeah, we've had loads of family members who are trying to convert with some of them um, to veganism um, but they kind of say to us well you know what, what do you cook what do you eat you know what's what's good alternatives for certain food if you like scrambled eggs this is the way to go because tofu is so versatile uh, again you can have it a bit like halloumi if you like you know halloumi cheese it's kind of got that texture if you prepare it in that way um, but yeah I love scrambled so so this is the um, kind of seasoning that I use for the chips. I'm just going to pour that in. Don't waste anything. Don't waste anything. So that's a little bit of paprika. Um, what else? Thyme. Only a little bit in there. And then we're just going to brown that off. Now, secret weapon is this stuff. Turmeric. And again, so many health benefits. If you like me and you get terrible allergies to hay fever, turmeric will save your life. Um, so a tiny, tiny bit of turmeric, because you can go OTT with turmeric and it will ruin it. But it just gives it a nice golden flavor. There we go. Nice golden flavor. Um, golden, yeah, flavor and a golden look. Sorted. Now it's really easy to um, overcook tofu, so you need to um, introduce a bit of, um, uh, yeah, something a bit watery. Um, soy milk is perfect. So just pop that in there. Quite a bit, careful. Right, okay, so should we look at the scramble? So, you can see it's getting nice and Nice and wet, really nice texture there. Looking a bit more like traditional scrambled eggs. Now the other thing you can do is with, because obviously this is sauteing, so it's got loads of moisture and water in it. You can add a bit of that to the scramble, not loads, because you don't want it like too mushroomy. But again, just loads of amazing flavor. Amazing. Right, um, and then the next thing we're going to do is um, steam the kale and the spinach and the peppers because they are really, really nice steamed. So let me just get this. Again, as I say, it's, this is a normal kitchen. You know, we don't have like loads of space. Well, we do have quite a few cupboards, but we don't have all this space where you can have like a wonderful like YouTube. To oh, look there, look there. Aww. Couple outside looking yeah. at our garden. <laughs> yeah, oh, sweet. Uh, we are oddballs. Like <laughs> our whole front garden is covered in pallets with like 
um, onions and spring onions growing and people always walk past going, ah, look what they grow. <laughs> Still buy short, um, shop, shop bought stuff because it's not growing yet. Right, so I'm just going to have to get the, boil the kettle. Right, so I put some boiled water in the steamer. Um, again, if you don't have a steamer like this, you can use a colander and put it on top of, everyone's got a colander, hopefully, um, and put it on top of, you know, a traditional saucepan. Saucepan. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, the scramble's coming along quite nicely. So what I'm gonna do is just take these off the heat, the mushrooms and the scramble, because they're pretty much ready and it's gonna take a little bit longer. So we're just gonna bung the peppers in first. Nearly made a fatal error. So between this and this, what's gonna cook quicker? Do you want pepper? Yeah, uh, no, this. Oh, quicker, sorry, yeah, the spinach. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is gonna cook a lot quick, quicker. It wasn't a question of you, babe, it was a question of that. Um, so yeah, so obviously think about it, and that is gonna to need to have a bit longer steamed than this, the spinach and the kale. So we'll try that in there. And uh, yeah, and then the other thing is when you're cooking, like tidy up as you go, because when you, when you dish up, the worst thing is when you see a kitchen and it's a shithole, um, and you think, oh, I've got to tidy it all up. So while you're waiting for things to cook, yeah, just, uh, just go get it clean. You listening, babe? So the other thing we do is um, we try and recycle as much as possible. So these cartons are amazing for planting fruit and veg, right? even as seedlings. So don't throw it away if you don't need to. Um, just cut the top off with your sharp knife. There you go. That is awesome for um, yeah, fruit and veg. Uh, and we'll show you when we go through the greenhouse, the wonderful greenhouse, how many of these we use. And they're, they're perfect, aren't they? Yeah. We've got sweet corn, which is like, like three foot high out of these bad boys. So yeah, just recycle. And the same with this as well. Perfect for seedlings. Take the plastic off, punch some holes in the bottom, and that's a tofu packet. Perfect, absolutely perfect. So yeah, just try and recycle as much as you can, really. Holier than now, which is <laughs> wonderful. That's why we go around looking like Jesus. Don't, don't believe in Jesus, so shouldn't talk about religion. Um, so yeah, should we check the peppers? So the peppers are coming along quite nicely. Um, again, they can do with a little season. So just some salt there, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. And you know, like, when I was eating meat, like, I was thinking, like, you know, moving to veganism, I was thinking, well, I just like meat, you know, I like meaty textures. Um, and I didn't realise how easy it is to get those kind of alternative meaty textures from plants and fungus and, and fruit and veg. Um, it's so easy. So things like jackfruit, Jackfruit is awesome. Um, I'll, I'll do a few with jackfruit. Jackfruit lasagna, um, spag bowl uh, on a pizza. It's good, isn't it, babe? Mm, really good. Yeah, just got to say that. But it is really good. Um, and similarly with mushrooms, you know, you can get really nice meaty textures out of mushrooms um, if you do have that urge, you know. But otherwise, you know, you, you're getting all your nutrients. Um, it's guilt-free. You know, there's no animal products at all. Um, and yeah, better for everyone, better for everyone. So the next thing I'm going to do is some basil. So if you do have a little basil plant um, that you get at the shop or if you grow your own, grow, grow your own, grow your own, <laughs> grown, um, then you can, you can, uh, well you should be seasoning um, with your basil as well. So the, Thing I tend to do is bunch all the leaves together, just like that. Curl them round. Look at that! 
Where's my knife? There it is. Uh, I'll put it on this one. Right. And then just chop them like that. Look at that. And then if you want it a bit smaller, just give it a go like that. Fresh basil, can't go wrong. Where do we put that? So you can put a pinch in with the mushrooms and the rest of it can go into the scramble. Like that. Give that a turn. Give those mushrooms a turn. Oh, they're looking awesome. Do you see how much they've shrunk? So yeah, you need to be quite liberal with how you cut them. <clears throat> And the other thing we're not using today is bread. So we try to limit the amount of bread we have because it's pure gluten and it's shit for your stomach. Um, it's obviously high in carbs, like the bad kind. Um, and actually you don't need it. You know, I think it's a lot of tradition where you've got to have bread with everything. Um, when in fact, you know, you can have a, a meal like this um, and it's enough, you know, you can have the wilted spinach and kale is kind of a, a bed um, the, the, the sweet corn wedges are going to add that crunchiness um, as a, the peppers and yeah you don't need bread bread's OTT uh, bad for you as well he says I love bread I fucking love bread but times are tough you know. so yeah right so peppers are doing well really well. Um, what we're going to do now, because uh, we mean business, we've got an another steamer and I'm going to chuck all this stuff in now. So that's just some kale and some spinach. On its own, kale is like a devil's vegetable. It's horrible. I don't like it. It's very like crunchy and tasteless. When you steam the bad boy, it will blow your mind. Um, and again, it's got quite yeah, quite a meaty texture, I think, when it's all kind of condensed down. So we're just gonna sprinkle some salt on there. Pepper it up. Chuck the lid on. And that's doing its thing. This might feel like quite a lot of effort to go through, um, but it really doesn't take long at all. Um, and yeah, you've got a few pots and pans to deal with. But, you know, if you want decent food, that's, you know, a sacrifice you have to make. Um, the other thing as well we tend to do, which uh, I think is the supermarket's best kept secret, is, you know, this, this is the end of a leak. So usually you'd throw that away in the bin. I've just popped that in some water and look at it. It's gone nuts. It's been about a week. So it's just going in there and then we're going to replant that in the garden and get a bad boy leak back on there payroll. So we should say we've done it the same with uh, spring onions but we'll see how that goes. I didn't really know what they're doing um, but maybe. I think they are growing look. So uh, yeah you know don't throw stuff away. It's so like we're so educated in our society to consume and then throw it away you know and actually do you need to you need to think about right actually plants are living you know even when you chop it up they're still alive and look at that. You know, you chop that up, you think, right, well, the end is dead, but it's not. It's still alive. And again, one of the big reasons why we chose to be vegan is like we're, we're eating things that are still alive, you know, giving us life. We're not eating a dead animal that, you know, is basically dead flesh. Not into it. No. You into it? No. Nah. So, yeah, so that's kind of our philosophy around it. And, the, you know, the biggest reason why we are vegan is for the ethical stance, you know, because, yeah, we don't we don't agree with the way animals are treated. It's, it's disgusting and outrageous just for, our, just for our taste buds. You know, an animal loses its life and lives in squalor, in terror, in fear, um, just because we like the taste of it. It's like, well, you can make anything taste like anything, you know, if you've got the, the skills and the know-how and the knowledge. Sorry. Oh, and um, yeah, you know, why, why needless, you know, it's needless to, to let animals suffer like that when actually you don't, you don't need to be eating them. 
But most people don't know how to prepare vegan food or vegetables or, or fruit or, or anything like that. And they don't, they, there's not much education out there as to like for, for normal people like us to, to try and eat well. Um, because again, your whole life you're educated and you're brought up on dairy, on cheese, on meat and bacon. Um, everyone knows how to, you know, cook bacon. Everyone knows how to cook a steak and things because that's what the meat and dairy industry want you to, to know, you know, so there's loads about that. But actually, you know, decent fresh fruit and veg, you know, there's not a lot. And the stuff you do find, it, yeah, people living in their fantastic kitchens, you know, um, and it's all, yeah, it's all perfect. Um, so I kind of, kind of wanted to do some videos for my friends and family that actually, you know, you can have a, a tiny little kitchen like this and still make amazing food from fruit, uh, you know, fruit and veg um, and other things like tofu and stuff. Um, I'm trying to put that in the bin. Pop it there. Uh, yeah, like us. Another thing crazy vegans do, like us, um, kitchen roll holder or toilet roll. Cut it in half, just like that. Get yourself a shredder in the kitchen. Shred that bad boy. For the compost. Awesome, you know? Awesome, like as simple as that. No, the point is, you know, if you have letters or, you know, particularly bills are quite good for putting through the shredder. Um, but anything like that, um, shred it up, put it in the compost, amazing. Love it, they love it, the, the garden loves it. Uh, all that carbon um, is really good for the uh, structure of the soil. Um, yeah, and that's, we do that all the time. A bit weird having a paper shredder in the kitchen, but so what? So what? So good, okay, right, so let's have a look at the spinach and the kale, so that's nicely, see that? Oh, look at that, look at that. Oh God, it smells so good. And the peppers underneath, yeah, they've done really well. So that is nearly ready to dish up. Um, as I said, tidy as you go, so things you're not gonna need, like lids, here's lids. Tidy up as you go, so it's a nice clean work surface. We're still going to need the pepper and the salt because we'll have a little bit at the end, just for just for shits and giggles. Um, and then let's have a look at the. Oh, look at that! So that's really hot. So I'm just going to move that across. Oh my god! This is what happens when you have a shit cooker. So we're just going to let that chill out. But can you see? So. So the sweet potatoes are done, nice and soft and crispy on the outside, and the uh, tomatoes are pretty much done as well. Could perhaps brown those a bit more, but whatever. But the point is, you know, they went in pretty much at the same time. So you've got to think about timings with things. And usually you can tell just by texture. So I'm just going to blast the mushrooms and the uh, scramble just because they've been off for a little bit, so just give them a nice blast. And then we'll start dishing up. Now oh, I'm so hungry, I'm so hungry. Good? <laughs> right, so now we're gonna dish up. Rhiannon didn't want me to show you the dishing up. She just wanted me to show you what it looked like afterwards. But I think actually it's really important because a lot of people just fling it on the plate, like I do most of the time. But you know, you can kind of, You've got to make things look nice, you know, they've got to look um, appealing. And um, yeah, so we'll give it a go. So we've got the, uh, I'm gonna kind of make a bed of spinach and kale. So I'm gonna just pop that there. Mind the fingers, it's all clean. I'll wash my hands. So there we go, can you see that all right? And steaming, uh, leafy greens like this is probably my favourite way of eating them because it just makes them nice and soggy uh, but the kale retains its crunch alright uh, and then we'll just season that a little bit that's it, a little bit of pepper um, now we've got our 
a red pepper, just pop that on top. Slotted spoon, best invention. Best invention, slotted spoon. Get yourself a slotted spoon. Slotted spoon. <laughs> okay. You know, even for like a big manly man like me, because I'm not a skinny guy. <laughs> I'm not a skinny guy, you know, and I think most people, if they did look at me, they'd think he's not fucking vegan, have a laugh, and yeah. Um, for a year, I've been vegan, and I haven't perished, you know, I haven't perished, and I'm not all super skinny, you know, wearing baggy shit like this makes me look skinnier, yeah? or bigger, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so you can eat healthily, you can eat ethically, and you can still be a chunky guy like me. Chunky bloke. Right, so then we're gonna put the scramble on. Again, slotted spoon, best invention. Just gonna pop that on there. Look at the colours. Look at the colours, Rhiannon. Look at that. Oh, but people's mouths are watering. Millions of people who are watching this. They're thinking, what is this shit he's putting on his plate? Right. So that's there. Um, next thing we're going to go with is the mushrooms. So again, oh my god, I'm going to pop them there. I said about like presentation, but I'm pretty much just flinging it on the plate. There we go. What's fungus good for, Rhiannon? Uh, vitamin D. Oh my goodness. And what does vitamin D do? Um, D day. It's good for your skin yeah. and uh, for your immune system. Oh my gosh. And if you want, um, if you can't remember that or you haven't written it down, because I expect you to have a pen and paper throughout this whole video, but some of you are ignorant. So uh, you may not have, um, but we'll do a little infographic for you. So you didn't even have to write anything down. You just look at that and think, well, Mushrooms have vitamin D in them, so. Anyway, so the water from the mushrooms is still in there. I'm not gonna chuck that down the sink because I'm not wasteful like that. Just scrape off all the stuff, pop it in the water that you've steamed with. Right? Pop that in there. That's for the, the dishwasher to do later. Uh, and then similarly with the tofu, Pan. Give that a little rinse, in it goes. And as I say, that water can be used for pasta, you know, tonight, or, um, or for, the, for the compost, or for, for watering can. Or soup stock. Soup stock, good, good girl. Cameraman's getting involved now. In, my, vi in my video. Um, and there we go. So. Let's just give that a little sprinkle. Little sprinkle there. Little bit of salt. There we go. Voila. Let's do the taste test. Yeah, you like it? Yeah? You've got a massive You've got a massive carpet behind you. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing for you. Thumbs up. <laughs>